All right, I will attack for 1600, set two, and pass. All right, if I win, you have to start playing Orcus, though. If I win, you have to stop playing Harold. Eugene, you just don't understand how much fun it is to perfect the deck. That was lame, even for me. <laughs> just keep hating, nerd. All right, uh, check this out. Activate Super Poly. Um, Judgment. Y you can't respond to it, Eugene. <laughs> yeah, I can. This is a spell speed three. That's the highest one. Technically, yes, but Super Poly is like a spell speed four. You're cheating. <laughs> no, that's really how it is. You can look it up. Well, what if I'm warning it? Nothing can be chained to Super Poly, bro. Not even... The best traps in the game. Yeah, yeah, That's it's pretty, pretty broken. broken. Yeah. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Super Polymerization, otherwise known as one of the only Spell Speed 4 cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! What is that? Why? Ugh, oh, Jesus hair problems. Yeah, I'm editing and I'm just like, why is that there? Oh well. This video is brought to you by 1UpTCG, by the way. Enter in the code NONO2020 and you will get 10% off of cards on their website that is down in the description, 1UpTCG.com. <sighs> Back to the video though. It randomly disappears too, whatever this is. So, uh, yeah, let's just go with it. Other spell speed four cards in the game include Dark Ruler No More, uh, Borolo Dragon, Ultra Polymerization, and Odd Eyes Gravity Dragon. There are, of course, a lot more out there, but th these are just some off the top of my head. A spell speed four effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! is something that is, is pretty interesting because it's not like an official term or anything. It's, uh, spell speed four is a term used by players, actually. Kind of like using the term fizzle when talking about cards that are resolving without effect or saying pop instead of destroy. It, it's it's along those same lines. The best way to explain a spell speed 4 effect in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that it's an effect that your opponent cannot respond to the activation of. Or in a lot of times, it's an effect that you can't even respond to the activation of. It's something that cannot be responded to. Now in my last video, I talked a lot about Orcus, but I also talked about just cards in general that round out formats. And in this format in particular, I think Super Poly is definitely one of those cards. Because we have Starving Venom Dragon now that makes Super Poly more splashable in a lot of decks. It gives you this easy monster, easy and powerful monster at that to go into. And we also have Mud Dragon, for example, to make Super Poly even easier. Super Poly just makes a lot of decks better, which makes it a great card overall. But the question here is not if it's a great card, because we all know that Super Poly is a great and powerful card. The question here is if it's fair or not, and should it have come back to three. Because getting back into the game right now, guys, I can tell you that Super Poly is a bitch to deal with. Like I just discussed though, guys, you cannot respond to Super Poly's activation, and it does make a lot of decks better. As if my baby Cyber Dragons, oh yes, that deck I got support for, you remember that one? Oh, the, just the deck that I'm the most known for. As if that deck was not good enough going to second. Now it's got three Super Poly. Great. It can be played in Shadals, uh, Weather Painters, Orcus. It makes a lot of decks better, like I've said a couple of times now, but it also allows you to be able to out your opponent's boards because your opponent cannot respond to it and because you can use monsters from either player's side of the field. Super Poly is a great card, guys. However, even though you can't respond to it and it uses monsters from either side of the field, I also view Super Poly as a fair card. The reason why is because it outs boards. Like I was just discussing, you cannot... It, and also, like I've discussed on this channel numerous times and including in my last video, and it's a very simple point, once again, you cannot have all these monsters and effects activate during either player's turn without cards to be able to get over them because it makes the game unbalanced, which is why we have cards, I don't know, like uh, Amano Awado, Nibiru, you know, stuff like that. Because those are cards that are reactive, you can go second with them. Um, Super Poly is kind of one of those cards that falls in those same lines because it allows you to go second, it's a quick play spell, and it gets over something. If you have, if you can't get over something, you know, it doesn't work every time. But yeah, you get my point. Super Poly is one of those cards that lets you play through things and be responsive, but it also provides you with a discard outlet, which is what makes it a way better card and a way more integratable card in a lot of different decks. I was just talking about Shadals, that's that's a great example. So I kind of have this love-hate relationship with the card because I like playing Herald a lot and there's a lot of times that I'll end with like one Herald on board and like six negates in hand because a lot of times that's just, you know, m most optimal that way anyways. You'll end with like a Dagra and like a Skull Dread and like a Herald and like six negates in hand. But if your opponent has Super Poly, 
I can't negate the activation with heralds. You, you can't do it, and they just outed my one herald. Love hate relationship, guys. Love hate relationships. Uh, that's that's a little unfair. That's a little busted, um, you know. And there's probably other examples you guys can think of, but that's just my most recent example, which kind of you know made me want to make this video because I already wanted to talk about Super Poly from the last video, but then you know stuff like that happens, and I'm like, yeah, we're gonna be talking about this card because it's kind of busted. But at the same time, though, at the same time, though. I do like playing Super Poly in a lot of decks, and uh, like I said, it is integratable in a lot of decks and allows you to go second. It's a better card, you know, a more integratable card than like Nibiru, um, you know, other cards. That, for example, I don't know, Lava Golem is whatever you want to pick going second to get over stuff. I don't care, whatever, pick your card here. My point is, it's more integratable than those cards. And because Super Poly is so integratable, I've been testing it in a lot of decks. It's just, it's just a better card. It's... <sighs> I can't explain it. It's it's I have a love-hate relationship with it. That's that's the best way to explain it I have a love-hate relationship with Super Poly. Sometimes I feel like the card is just too dangerous to be left alive, you know uh, But then other times I remember that it was on the forbidden list for a while So it's nice seeing it around. It's, it's, it's nice seeing it back It's actually very interesting that they brought Super Poly back to three when it is so good in decks like Shadal's Because if you would remember Super Poly was put on the list in the first place because of Shadal's Bet you guys didn't remember that. When Duelist Lions came out, Super Poly was legal, and that card was busted in Shadal's. It, it got over a lot of different stuff. They had to ban the card because Shadal's were just too powerful with it. And with all this new Shadal's stuff coming out, it's very interesting that we have Super Poly to three. Just, just a random observation. But wait a minute, wait a minute. There's new Shadal's stuff coming out. Burning Abyss is still a thing. Klee is unlocked. Necroz are like unlocked. Yang Zing's still around, Teller Knights are still around. It's a really good time to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh, guys. You can play so many different cool decks right now, it's so awesome. So it is a really good time to be playing Yu-Gi-Oh. There are a lot of decks that you could choose from, but at the same time, there is enough, you know, uh, uh, I guess good meta decks, you know, your tier one decks around to where you know what should be played, and so it's not like a complete uh, scatterbrained, uh, you know, fuck fest or whatever. You know, everyone's just playing everything, and it's like the Wild West, it's not like, it's not completely like that. So this is a really Really, really good time to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! It really, really is. I'm, I'm very interested to see what Konami announces, you know, coming up, you know, with the uh, uh, next Master Rule change. But we'll, we'll, we will cross that bridge when we get over to it. For now, though, Super Poly, in this current format, love-hate relationship. It is a very good card that can be integrated in a lot of different decks, and that makes me happy because I like building decks. Actually, I like building decks more than playing, believe it or not. But it's also very annoying because... You can't stop the damn thing. You, you can't stop it. So in closing, guys, Super Poly is a broken card, but also a weirdly fair card at the same time. Because it makes certain decks better and more viable, because it can be integrated in those decks, and of course, like I stated earlier, it can be used to play through your opponent's boards, and also, like I stated earlier, you can't have your opponent be able to vomit all this crap out without you having a way to get over it. So yeah, guys, I'm really happy that the card is back around. It's just kind of annoying not being able to respond to it, because I've literally seen it steal games. Because it stole my games. So many games that I should have won. But I couldn't respond. So many games. It was like really wanting to text somebody, but your phone was dead. I couldn't respond. I couldn't respond. Subscribe!